In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do for loops, while loops, and uh, if if conditions within R. Um, if you're confused with the, the layout of what I have right now, I'm using R Studio, so that's really optional if you want to get it or not, because for this tutorial it doesn't matter, but I highly recommend that you do get it because it's uh, it's quite useful as a, as a user interface. Okay, anyway, let's get started with this tutorial. So the first thing is a for loop. So to do a for loop, what you go is for, and in curly brackets, uh, sorry, in normal brackets, you go for uh, whatever variable you choose, i in this case, in 1 to 7. So what I'm saying over here is that I'm going to loop 7 times from i equals 1 all the way up to 7. Okay, um, I'm going to print i so that you can see that it, it is actually printing. Uh, it is actually going from 1 to 7, so there you go. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 7. Okay, let's do something a bit more interesting. Um, let's try and break this loop, or rather, sorry, in, in this step I'm going to be skipping the loop at, at a specified uh, point. So, for example, if uh, i was equal to 7, uh, was equal to, say, 3, I don't want to print. Okay, so basically I want to go to the next iteration. So, if I want to go to the next iteration, I go, if i equals 3, go next. Oh, by the way, uh, something I forgot to t uh, tell you was that notice how I'm putting this this curly bra braces over here, right? The, the curly brackets is quite important for the for loop, um, especially if you have more than one statement. So if you had just one statement like print i, I could have got, gotten away without using these um, curly brackets. But if you're writing more things so that, like what I am doing right now, in that case, you definitely have to put the curly brackets in. Okay, so okay, come back to this one. If i equals 3, I want to skip this, but otherwise I want to print i. Okay, as, it, as expected, it skips 3. Now let's do one more thing, the break statement. So for i in 1 to 7 again, but this time if i is equal to 3, you can break the loop. So it, so before it skipped to the next iteration, but this time it'll break the loop altogether, and that's all it's going to print. So this time it's only going to print uh, i equals one and two. And the reason is it doesn't it doesn't print three is because the print statement is after the break statement. Okay, I hope that's that's fairly uh, straightforward. And I'll do one more thing: the while loop. Okay, so some people prefer to use the while loop instead of for loop, and, and then this is perfectly fine. So in this case, all you're going to say is while, um, say, uh, while k is uh, less than 10. Now, when I do this, it's going to give me a syntax error. Uh, and we'll print k, right? Uh, it's going to give me a syntax error because I didn't define what k was, right? So so now I'm going to do this, so k is equal to 1. And now I'm going to go while k is less than 10. Oh, oops, my bad. Uh, I, I put the curly braces too quickly. All right, so again, while k equals 10, uh, k is equal to k plus 1. Print k, and again, I put the print statement after the, k, the, the increment, right? Um, and then there you go. So k will be from like you'll print out two to ten. Okay. So again, k once k got incremented up to ten. When k was equal to ten, this this loop broke. All right. The reason it's printing ten is because I had this addition just right after the start of the loop. Um, and you can use break statements if uh, the next statement exactly exactly the same way that we did before, right? So if i equals 3, I, if k equals 3, I can break it and so on. And uh, that's that's it for loops. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Uh, and thanks for watching. And please do subscribe.